Hello, chill computer guy here. We're in Bitwig Studio 2.4, and we are going to talk about the inspector. Now, with the 2.4 update came a lot of changes to the inspector. A lot of people haven't really been talking about them. If you go to the Bitwig website, there's not a lot of information on some of the new things. To the left here is, is this is this is a device. This happens to be the Isotope Iris 2, which is definitely my top three uh, instrument VSTs of all time. If you're only going to have three, make sure the Iris 2 is one of them by Isotope because it's an organic. Ah, it's just a beautiful thing. But this isn't about the Iris 2. This is about what happens with third-party instruments or third-party VSTs, effects, whatever you want to call it. When you click on them, this is what you get in the inspector. You get this, okay? And this is kind of confusing because you can see, okay, there's an active button. There's also a power button. There's like a moon here. What's going on? Suspend, trust plugin, never when si what does all this mean? What in the fuck is MPE? What does that mean? Uh pitch pitch bend range? Yeah, that makes sense. You know, what is what are these circles? What's going on here? You know? Um, and so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna explain all that. We're gonna explain all that. So check it out. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Comment below because this is we're going to talk about the nicks and crannies of Bitwig Studio here on this channel. Little things that you're not going to find anywhere else. All right. All righty. Welcome back. So check it out. Here's what we have. We have the isotope down here. And if I click on it, then I'm going to get this option, okay, up here in the upper left. And uh, let's go ahead and talk about what this is all about here. So this is what I see. I see a power button, which is, that makes sense. That's on or off. Well, but then there's an active button. So, uh, okay, so what's the difference? That's what you're thinking, okay? I'll tell you the difference, okay? This right here is, is your device plugged into the wall, okay? If you uncheck this, you've basically yanked the power cord out of the wall, okay? It is in no way using any DSP whatsoever. It's like this device is, it's like you deleting the device, but it's still there, basically. Um, something I love about Bitwig Studio more than any other DAW on the market is the ability to allocate your DSP. I absolutely love it. And it's all about third-party VSTs, you know some of these things. I mean, you got you got a seventh cord, you're using a serum patch, you got a seventh cord. I mean, look at your DSP, you know, it's lighting up. And so the ability to allocate that to only the instruments playing, only the instruments being used, and let's say you, you wrote a part, but you just want to unplug it from the wall, you, you just want to set it on the side. You, you, you want to unplug it and not have it use anything. You want to set it on the side. Maybe you even want to hide it, okay? So this active thing is just, that's what it is. It's, it's unplugging it from the wall, okay? Now, if that is active, then you're going to have three different possibilities for this power button. It's going to be on, meaning it's a, you know, an on symbol. It's orange. Or if you click it, then it's off, okay? It's still plugged in, but it's off. It's turned off, okay? If you want your VST to not use up any DSP whatsoever, then you need to click on, uh, you need to deactivate it, okay? That's very important. And the thing about this activity button is you can deactivate entire channels, mix buses. I mean, that's, again, that's what I love about Bitwig Studio is your ability to allocate the DSP. It's something that I thought was a huge downfall with Propeller Head Reason. Uh, for example, um, Bitwig Studio, you, I had nine projects open the other day. I had nine projects open. And they were playing fluently. You know how many VSTs are running? But I'm able to allocate where the DSP is going. I can deactivate eight of the nine projects. I can deactivate channels. I can deactivate devices. Completely unplug them from the wall, okay? You know, would you, would you in your house have toasters, microwaves, electric, everything plugged in, all the heat producing appliances. Let's say you have 19 hair dryers plugged in and you have them all turned on. You're going to pop out the circuit breaker. It's the same thing with DSP, okay? And you could have the most powerful computer imaginable. It's all about your sound card and that's, that's a whole nother tutorial. That's a whole nother subject. And I'm not going to talk about DSP, but just know that with Bitwig Studio, if you click this little thing here, look at this. Look at this graph. So there it is. There's your DSP graph. 
And if I click on this active button, I've deactivated that. So you can see it's using absolutely zero DSP, you know? Um, it's like basically deleting it from your project. But the device is still there. All your MIDI information, all your effects, they're still there. They're just deactivated. They're off on the side. They're unplugged. They're still put together. All those ideas are still there. All your settings are still there. They're just off to the side and unplugged. And think about how valuable that is. Now, you could have 20 versions of Serum all playing ninth chords and have them all deactivated. And this is the same uh, DSP that you'll get here, OK? Let's go ahead and activate this. And notice we're getting a little bit of fuzz here, a little bit of fuzz just because the iris is active, OK? That's just it humming away, OK? Let's go ahead and play a note. Let's go ahead and play a triad. How about a seven chord? How about a nine chord? It goes right back down. Now, keep your eye on this power button, OK? You see that? You see what happened? It turned to a moon, OK? Now, this is the third state of this button. This is standby mode. In other words, you can see this is not using any DSP, but it's active. I can click it. I can click a key. Right back up and running, but check it out. Hands off. In 10 seconds, it goes into standby mode. This is very, very powerful. Because if you have a complex song, you have some complex high DSP VSTs going on during one section of your song, but are dormant, are not even functioning during another section of your song, it will put those to sleep. It will, it will, it will put them in standby mode. It's the allocation of the DSP which makes Bitwig Studio, in my opinion, better than any DAW on the market right now. Um, so this is the suspend option you have down here. Now, by default, trust plugin. This is kind of an auto. Uh, think of it as auto. And this is going to be determined by the plugin. Now, every single VST that I have tried in Bitwig, and I don't, I don't own a lot of uh, VSTs, especially instruments. Um, but I, I imagine there are certain instruments that are going to override this. And so this trust plugin is basically leaving it up to the plugin to to either suspend itself after 10 seconds of not being used. But that's the default. And I like I say, I've not found any instrument that hasn't fallen asleep when not being used. So you also can override that by going never, which means that, as you can see, we're back on now. That means it doesn't matter if it's being played or not. It will always be on and active and using DSP. I don't recommend this. I don't see a reason why you would want this. I mean, I guess if you're constantly switching between tons of instruments, like like sec every like second or something, maybe you know it. It maybe there could be issues, but I I see no reason to use never. And then you can also have it go when silent, meaning that it doesn't matter what the VST is telling Bitwig. Bitwig Bitwig is automatically gonna silence that VST after not being used, 10 seconds after it's being used, OK? One 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000, 9, 1,000, 10. There you go. OK, so that's what the suspend is, OK? So know that you can leave it up to the VST. You can leave it up to the manufacturer. You can leave it up to whatever the instrumental plugin is. Or you can override that, meaning that if you're not using the VST, it will go silent within 10 seconds. Or always keep the VST on. You don't want it going to silent, OK? Uh, so I'm going to leave this on Trust Plugin. But that's what that does, OK? That's what that does. That's what that thing is. It doesn't talk about it too much, but just know that that's what that is. And then below that is 
Use MPE. Now, now some of you will remember I had a tutorial that was uh, back June 7th, 2017, so a little while ago, about micro pitch expression editing. Say what? And in this tutorial, I ex basically explained what MPE is. MPE is micro pitch expression. Okay. In this tutorial, I talked about how you can only use this with, with uh, Bitwig default instruments. Um, and that was the case back then. Um, with any third-party VSTs, you could not use micro pitch expression whatsoever. But guess what? In 2.4, we can use micro pitch expression editing in any plugin, okay? Any VST instrument. And so that's what the MPE is all about. It's micro pitch editing, okay? So if this, if you turn this on, you can set your pitch bend range, okay? This is a little misleading because the smaller the, the number is here, the more change you're going to get between the notes. Let's go ahead and type in a couple of notes and we'll show you. We're going to go from an A2 here and then we're going to go up to an A3 and then we're going to go down to an A1, let's say, and then back up to... Okay, so we're just basically, we're going to go up an octave, then down two octaves, then up an octave, okay? So now normally if you play this, pretty boring, you know? But here's the thing, micro pitch editing is this little icon right here, okay? Go ahead and click on that, and now you can do micro pitch expression. And then you'll see you get these, uh, these little black lines in the middle of the note, and that actually represents the pitch of the note. Now you can actually click on here and create little dots and then actually bend that up. See how I bend that note up? And then I can go here, bend this note down. Doesn't quite reach because I didn't make the note long enough. My bad. Go there, and then I can go from here, and then do like so. Okay, so what I've done is I've created a, a pitch adjustment. So, so basically what's going to happen is this is going to interpolate the pitch, okay? So the pitch is basically going to slide up to this note, and then it's going to slide down to that note, and then it's going to slide up to that note. Now, in the past, this wouldn't work, okay, with VSTs. And you can see the MPE is turned off. Let's go ahead and listen to this with the MPE turned off. Okay, that wasn't very exciting. Let's go ahead and use the micro pitch expression. Okay, and like I say, you used to not be able to use this with third-party VSTs, but now in Bitwig 2.4, you can, and that is very powerful. All right, let's go ahead and play that now. How about that? And the nice thing about this micro pitch adjustment is you can control, you can, you can hit Alt and create curves. Very cool. You can create some curves and just get all crazy with the pitch. Let's go ahead and listen to that again. Unbelievable. Very, very cool. Now, you used to not be able to do this with third-party VSTs. But remember, you got to click this button right here, okay? That button has to be clicked, and then that will allow you to do the micro-pitch expression there. Now, one more quick thing about uh, the MPE or the micro-pitch expression is your, you have your pitch bend range here, okay? And this goes all the way up to 96, which is, God, what is that, eight octaves? And it goes to uh, one. Um, this pitch bend range is kind of confusing. So if I put this to 96 and play this.
So what's weird is the larger the number is, the less change, which is kind of abstract. So if I put this all the way down to like six, which is half, half an octave, six semitones basically, let's go ahead and play that. I've actually found that 12 is my favorite. I've kind of experimented around, um, you know, but yeah, I found 12 to be the best, to be my uh, my favorite as far as that goes. Um, but that's pretty much it. And then below there, these are pretty much any um, any modulation you have. This is modulation to, this is modulation from. For example, if I come down here, to my instrument, and let's say I'm going to add some modulation to it. Let's add an LFO. Okay, let's uh, have the LFO modulate macro two. Okay, that's that. That's what's going on. Now, when I go back to the instrument, and so now you can see right there, this is the modulation two, which is the LFO to macro two. And then what's nice about this is you can adjust this right here. You know, you can go all the way up 100%, which is 1.0, or you can double click and type in the exact amount. I mean, I love that. That is powerful because you don't actually have to go down and, and mess with your device. You can actually do it all from the inspector, okay? That's modulation two, LFO to macro two, and then this, the one next to it, is modulation from, okay? So macro two is modulated from the LFO. Okay, and so that's what those do. And of course, if you adjust this value here, you can adjust it on the from or you can adjust it on the to. As you can see, it's the same value. If I change it here, it's going to change it in both um, menus here. But when you start to have devices that can modulate back, mainly default Bitwig devices, that you can take a device and modulate it to, so you can modulate the device and have the device modulate a modulator then the uh, the from menu becomes pretty powerful. But just remember, this is modulation to, LFO to macro two. This is modulation from, okay? Macro two from LFO, okay? And so that's the difference between these two. One more quick thing that I wanted to mention with VSTs, and this is something that I have kind of actually just discovered through doing this tutorial. If you uh, load up some uh, modulation on a VST, I'm going to use an LFO, for example, and this is similar to the th thing I was just talking about. Let's go ahead and take macro one. Let's go ahead and take that up. And so you can see the LFO is modulating the macro, okay? That's what's going on there. Let's go back to the inspector. So you can see this is no longer in standby mode. That's something that's very important to understand. And so as you can see right here on the Iris 2, we have that macro being turned by the LFO. And so that's basically the, the VST is, is functioning because the macro is being turned. Therefore, it cannot go into standby mode because it's as if somebody is physically, you know, adjusting the knob, which kind of does make sense to a certain extent. And I've even uh, switched this to when silent. Um, and there's no way I can get this in standby mode. I've tried everything. It will not go into standby mode. You can see everything is in standby mode, but this isotope iris is not in standby mode. But you can see as soon as I delete this LFO, we go right into uh, standby mode. So yeah, something to be aware of there. But if the modulation is internal inside the VST, um, it seems to uh, go into standby mode fine. It's just only if you're using the external Bitwig modulators on third-party VSTs um, then they tend to not go into standby mode. So that is something I have noticed. Um, kind of a little bit of a gotcha. But other than that, you know, that, that's what this panel is all about. It's, uh, that's what it does. And uh, a lot of this wasn't covered. A lot of this stuff is new. And it's pretty powerful to know that you can put your VST instruments into standby mode. You can also use the micro pitch expression with your VST instruments. Um, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. I'm going to try to, uh, there's not a lot of people doing uh, Bitwig tutorials right now. Um, but I don't really want to do basic Bitwig tutorials. I want to kind of get into the nick and cranny of the software 
and uh, and explore things that haven't been talked about a lot. And that's one of them is the new inspector panel. You'll notice a lot of changes in the inspector panel, especially when it comes to the sampler. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. We're gonna have more quick tips, quick tutorials on the inspector panel. Um, and little gotchas here and there. Tips you're not gonna get anywhere else. Chill computer guy, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up, comment down below. Tell a friend about my channel. If you know anybody who's experimenting around with Bitwig Studio, be sure to tell them about this channel. Chill computer guy, uh, thanks for tuning in. Remember, these tutorials are not for beginners, they're not for experts, they're for everybody. Uh, my main goal here is, is to inspire you to make music, and let me tell you, making music in Bitwig Studio the ability to allocate your VST, to use your micro pitch expression on VST third party instruments is just it's becoming it's just becoming better and better with every new uh, update here. So this time we covered the inspector as far as VST instruments, as far as third party instruments or third party effects. Talked about the inspector panel. Um, we're going to have more things coming up, so be sure to subscribe. Give a thumbs up. Tell a friend about the channel. Thanks for tuning in tonight, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye now. Let's put three dots there, and then let's make a chord here. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that. Let's go there. There. Ooh, that's already got a bend on it. Okay, yeah, I bent that one earlier. Okay, now let's hit Control, or Alt, rather. Oh, nice. Look at that, Alt. Oh, you can just bend it. God, that's so sick. I mean, that's crazy. Let's play this. This is the chord right here. That's pretty cool. Micro pitch expression.